trumpet or hornbill. These are amazing birds named for that little a trumpet or hornbill. Of it. It's called a cask. It's like a horn. Um, and they spend their days in Africa, kind of darting in and around tree branches to look for things to eat. Which we want to show a couple people up close, right? Yeah. Okay, so Lucy's gonna go out to the back, and I need two people who want to be trees. <laughs> this will make more sense in a second. Two people who came together from the same party. We're looking for two hands going up. Oh, right there. With the mom and with the ears on. You two want to help me out? Okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to stand up right where you're at. Okay, perfect. That was a sneak preview of what's about to happen. You're going to face each other. Okay, and then with your arms, I want you to go like this. You have now made a gap in the forest. Your arms are tree branches. We're going to see if Harvey can make his way through that gap in the branches. He's like doing laps to practice right now. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, Harvey, right, would you like to try this one more time? He's thinking about it. He's looking at it. Okay, perfect. Just like that, so we know we can fly low. There's Lucy in the back. What do you think, friend? Can you do it? Oh, yeah. I think we said they fly in and around trees, right? Yeah. Not right? He's right again. All right, what do you think? Can you make it? The hoop is low. But I bet you can make it up and in. We call this building suspense. This is good, right? All right, we're going to try this. I can't get Lucy much lower. How about a round of applause for the volunteers? They did a great job. We'll do more practice on that one. And see, the agility is important for a bird like this because one of the things they need to be able to do is catch flying insects right out of the air. That's okay, crazy. that is amazing. What if we could show that off? You said, okay, Lucy claims she has a plug. We don't have any flying insects. We do not, but I have this. Does anybody know what this is? Shout it out if you do. Uh, yeah, rocket launcher, right? It's not rocket, but I've kind of mo like modified this one a little bit. So today, it's going to be a green launcher. <laughs> Up in the air and see if Harvey can catch it. Yes, uh, does someone want to help me test it out? Actually, anybody want to help me try? How about I saw your hand first in the black t-shirt and the blue shorts on the end? You want to help me? Let's give it a hand for volunteering. Right. Hello. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin, nice to meet you, Kevin. Check it out. I have a grape. We're going to put a grape into the launcher, okay? Then the audience is going to count you down from three, and when we get to one, it is your job to stomp on that launch pad like as hard as you possibly can. We'll like really stomp on it and then look up. We'll see if Harvey can grab the grape out of the air. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah looks really. like we're ready to go. Help me count them down. In like three, two, two, one. One of the Whoa. most fun birds we have here, this little bird. His name is Tendo. He's called the Pied Crow. Yeah, so Tendo is very, very smart, and we have a cool way to show off just how intelligent he is, which means I need another volunteer. But this time it has to be an adult, and we need someone who has a dollar bill. Anybody have cash money still on them? How about, okay, let's go right here. You have like a black bow on your head, and yeah, you have a dollar bill on you. Excellent, go ahead and pull that out. What we've done, we've taught Tendo to know who in the audience we wanted to fly to based on who's holding that dollar bill. It's like a flag. So if you stand up in your seat, make a perch with your arm with that dollar bill in your fingertips, I bet he will fly out and land. First, he's going to check all of his usual spots to see if any of the other birds left any treats behind. But then, hopefully, he's going to fly down, scan the audience, and fly right out to your arm. Are you finding a lot of good stuff up there on that mat, Tendo? Okay, here we go. Check out this flight. What he's looking. Ready? And last piece. Here we go. And... No, wait, one more. <laughs> now I said, what are you doing? Are you going through the woods? There's more stuff down there. These birds are really, really good at foraging, right? This is what they're built to do. We kind of talked about how smart they are. Yep. Kendo remembers every spot in this audience or in this theater where he has gotten a treat before. So he's going to go and check every single spot to see if there's another one out there. Very, very good memory, very intelligent birds, and also really good at kind of stalling the show. Okay, I think he's done. Here we go, Tendo. Do you see me? I have, no. 
It's gonna double check the bleachers. What are you doing back there? You are really, really searching. Are you gonna go underneath the bleachers now? Here we go. Oh, please uh -huh. don't do that. Grab that. I have a bunch of treats for you up here. Hey. Just like we planned. Excellent. Okay. Now, he should hopefully scan the audience. He sees you. Hey, what is that? Thank you so much. You have a magical day. I think he needs more practice, right? Anybody else want to play with a crow? Me. For a 20? I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. We're actually going to bring your money back. Do you stand up again for me? Palm flat this time. He should put it in your hand and then just wrap your fingers around it when he does, all right? Okay, Tendo, we have another part of this job to do. There's the money. Do you remember where you got that money from? Yes, I didn't break my And close your fingertips. He flew over me. That is so cool. And you will never forget the day you got money back at a theme park. That was great. You did great with that. Um, super fun stuff. So um, we want to get more people in up close look like that. Would you folks like to see an owl fly? Yes. Yes, I love it, right? Owls are the best. If you have a camera, this is a bird you want to get it out for because a lot of people are going to get very very close to this bird. Yeah. Slow motion video. Okay, this is something Lucy yeah. told me about the other day, which was such a good suggestion. So good. These birds are so close when they fly. So what we want to be able to do is give everybody a really, really close look. I see cameras are at the ready. This yeah. is good. Okay, good. very okay. good. Corey's the one who's going to give us a little heads up. What's that? What's, hold on, wait. What? Oh. Oh, oh a chicken? That's not an owl. It's a chicken! Okay, um, yeah, that sh sh chicken should be out. Do y'all know the circle of life? Yeah! We don't do that here. No, we don't. Um, I'm gonna walk Ritz back to the coop really quick. Give me like one minute and then I'll come back out. We can do the owl. Okay, hold on. Hey, okay, so where are you going? <laughs> Lucy's gonna keep the chicken safe and uh, we're gonna meet an owl. A uh, beautiful owl. Actually, his name is JJ. JJ's called a great horn owl, an impressive little bird who's joined me on stage. Look at this. Told you he gets close. All right, he's gonna fly across the theater next. So keep your eye on that bird because some of you in the flight path are gonna get really ridiculously close to him once he figures out exactly which way he wants to go. So you gotta make sure he's clean with all the treats. At his feet. He's looking. He's thinking. That is so awesome. And this is exactly how it works for a bird like this in the wild, right? Look at him. He'll get up high so he can get a great view of everything. He's got incredible vision. Look at the way he blends in with the background. What do we call that when an animal blends in? Camouflage. Oh, that's awesome. And they've got silent flight. When they fly, it doesn't make any sound. That means they can sneak up on their prey. A little mouse or rat who will never even realize that there was an owl above them, right? They're ambush predators. Sit and wait hunters is what we call that. And it is a job they are very, very good at. JJ, you did an incredible job. We would love to keep you out here. You tend to make the other birds a little nervous though. Yeah, you should head inside. That's JJ, the great horned owl. So, so, okay, oh. thank you, hi. Hey. Chickens are back in the coop. Chicken safe. Yeah, well, chicken. Okay, so um, we're going to fly the owl. No, I didn't. Yeah. You already did it? I missed the whole owl? Yeah. You almost caught the tail end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Next time. Um, okay, did you tell the cool, like, owl facts? I, I think it's cool. I mean, I think the coolest thing about owls is they are crazy efficient predators. Yeah. A bird like JJ, he's cute, right? But a bird like that in the wild could eat, like, a thousand rats and mice in a year, which is crazy. It's true, which, actually, we had a huge rat problem here. Not too long ago, you know yeah, the owl's hope goes out so much with it, it was yeah. fast. It's crazy. Right. Yeah, we had rats everywhere, but what happens is, when you have birds of prey, they, they take care of it. Y'all don't talk about it, they take care of that problem. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I know, it was, I don't know, they're like the owls are number one. Owls are number one, owls are number one, yeah. yes, that's exactly what right. I know! It's crazy. We, yeah. we do love the owls. It was definitely like super helpful because yeah, it was pretty gross around here for a long time. But no need to worry. I think it's safe to say the rat problem is behind us now. <laughs> Take that, Jungle Cruise. Bruh. 
Should we move on? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, okay, I did have a really fun idea while I was oh, okay. rattling the chickens in the back. Um, I was thinking, you know, we work with so many different types of birds. They come out here and do all of this cool stuff. And people always want to know, like, how do we train them? And why don't the birds just fly away to Epcot to drink around the world? Like those two birds up there who don't actually even work here. <laughs> Um, I need the splash zone. Those, yeah, you are. Uh, those are the claws from our sister show, Winged Encounters, that might be hanging out for a minute. But what I was thinking is that we could bring one of our birds out and like do a training session. Okay. Do you want to see some training? Yeah! yeah. Okay. What if we bring out one of the ravens, like Luca? Luca? That was very close. Um, okay, okay. Um, I can I can train and why don't... Oh! Yeah. oh. Awesome! Okay, so we got a raven out here, ladies and gentlemen. A collared raven. Uh, so smart, right? Ravens are super smart. So what Lucy's doing is just trying to establish like where we're going to work out here because this bird could be anywhere as these paras are showing us there's no limitations to their travel ability they can go anywhere so if we want them on stage she can do something like calm go rock say hey that's true we can just come here also we found something to eat what is that i don't know but he ate it <laughs> Sun chips is that what you said <laughs> yes thank you okay an onion ring. Okay, that's exciting. Okay, good. But he came back to Lucy. See, that's what these birds can do anything they want to out here, but we try to reinforce specific behaviors back up there. So we try to reinforce specific. Did he just. Okay, no other one. Um, so, uh, look, well, okay, reinforcement means if we give him a treat for Lucy. Just give him a treat for untying my shoes. No. <laughs> I, I'm giving him treats for coming back to the rock, right? So that he'll stay here. Stay. Want... Stay. Yes, yeah, stay. Good. Okay, that's right? good. Yes, yeah. exactly. Reinforcement is about future behavior. We're thinking about what he does. Are you serious? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you like rearrange my shoes? Come on, really? <laughs> Look at no! <laughs> Bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my concern is I don't want to. Okay, no, we're not going to do this again. Come on. Can you please go up there? No! Hey, don't bite me. Don't bite me. Can you please? No! Yeah, I'm okay, stop, 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 stop. We're going to come to the laces. Oh, no. That's my microphone cord. <laughs> Ta -da. Well, it's fun. I don't know what to do with that. Hannah is our sound tech in the back. Hi, Hannah. Can we fix that? No. Okay, the spare one. Do you wanna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you wanna have someone run it out for you really fast? I don't. Well, no. How, I, well, could you just do it on stage really fast? I'll be back as fast. No, because we no, we need two people for the. <laughs> the shoe thing was pretty good though, right? <laughs> I'm glad y'all think so, cause that's my boss. <laughs> um, we're gonna keep mixing things up. How about that? Uh, let's. Yeah. Do y'all want to meet a parrot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not like the the big parrots that are flying around. Like a smaller one. Give me like one second. Hold on. Hey guys. Hey La. Hey, could you do me a favor and bring out Kiwi? Yeah, Kiwi. Could you do that like right now? Would you want to do that? Uh, yeah, 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 perfect. Okay, I'll get everything set up. All right, so Kayla in the back is going to see if Kiwi wants to come out. Kiwi is this very, very smart little African gray parrot, and he knows some pretty cool stuff, including some mimicry. He can copy human speech, but by far the coolest thing Kiwi knows how to do is math. He's actually a very good mathematician. So what if we have a fun math competition. Is there anybody out there between the ages of like 8 to 10 years old who would want to come up on stage and talk into a microphone? And you have to be really, really good at math. That is the most important part. Really comfortable. I saw a lot of hands go down. Comfortable doing math. Okay, how about right here? You're kind of being voluntold in the pot show. Do you want to come up? 
Yeah, all right, let's give them a hand for helping us out. And you are gonna meet Kayla right over here at the stage. She'll get you set up, and then while y'all are um, figuring out what we're gonna do, let's introduce everyone to Kiwi. Kiwi, would you like to say hello? Yes, a teeny tiny hello. I told you he knew some mimicry, right? Um, he can also introduce himself. We gave him the name Kiwi, and he gave himself a last name. Can you tell everyone your full name? <laughs> Kiwi Wee Wee is his whole name now. Uh, yes, very, very cute. However, like I said, Kiwi is very, very good at math, which is why we are going to have a competition. So, how about, will you introduce yourself? Can you say your name into the microphone? I'm Vanya. Let's give it up for our volunteer for helping us out. Okay, did you think you were going to be doing math on vacation? No. No? Yes. Okay, so um, here's how it's going to work. I am going to ask a math question. All you have to do is say the answer into your microphone before Kiwi answers into his, okay? Okay, let's start off with an easy one. How about what is one plus three? Four. Four. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, okay, you, yeah, you got the right answer, and you were right behind Kiwi, who was a little bit faster. Um, let's call that one a warm-up, okay, because now we have the right idea. Okay, how about let's try another one. What is seven minus three? Four. <laughs> Four? Oh my goodness, he is very fast. Um, okay, how about this? Do you want me to try and slow him down a little bit? Yeah, I can ask a little bit of a harder question. We'll try and slow down Kiwi. How about what is... 12 divided by 3. <laughs> do you know divide advice? Yeah, you do. Um, how about this? Are you having fun up here? Yeah, Kiwi, are you having fun? <laughs> He's winning, so. How about this then? Let's, let's throw out all of those other questions. Let's just do one more. Winner takes all for the grand prize. Y'all think she can do it, right? Yeah. Okay, you got this. How about what is two plus two? Four. She got it! Excellent job. And that means you are the winner. Here is your prize, your very own sunflower seed. <laughs> hey, those are like eight dollars out in the park, okay? <laughs> Okay, so we're actually pulling your leg a little bit. Kiwi doesn't really know how to do math. Watch this. Kiwi, what is 1,000 plus three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that the right answer? No, Kiwi, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I actually heard some people out in the audience figured it out. What was the answer to all of those questions? Four. Four, yeah. So Kiwi only knows how to say four, and his cue to say the number four is another number. Did anyone figure out what the cue is? Yeah, it's three, three, three. <laughs> That's why he's so fast, right? He's just listening for the cue. And actually, it even works if you say something that kind of sounds like his cue. Kiwi, what would you say if you hit your golf ball over a tree? <laughs> works if you think about it. How about one more hand for our volunteer? You did such a great job. Thank you so much for helping us out. And Kiwi, you did so good out here too today, buddy. Um, I tell you what, this audience has been really sweet. Can we do something sweet? For them, will you give them a kiss? <laughs> and then we will end the routine the only way we know how. Can we end on a high note? <laughs> Excellent. That was Kiwi, the African Great Parrot. Oh my goodness. And Kayla, thank you so much for helping us out. That was so good. All right, so I know Kiwi is a lot of fun. Um, he's probably one of the most unique parrots I think we've ever met. Hi. Can you hear me now? The backup works. Continue. I interrupted up something. I know. Okay, so we, we brought up Kiwi. Yeah. I'm assuming you heard. I just want to mention really quickly before we move on to the next bird. I know he looks really cool. He looks like a lot of fun, but I do not want him to inspire anyone to want to run out to a pet store to try and find a parrot who's going to do fake math or talk like a person. Most parrots don't do that, and they are some of the most challenging pets you could ever have in your house. Yeah, absolutely. So, so many important things that people need to understand about parrots, right? You hear all our guys hollering back there? That's what they do all day. Parrots are built to scream so they can hear each other over miles in the forest. They'll do that at your house. Um, they can bite really hard and live a really long time, 40, 50 years or longer. It is a lifetime commitment. It's a ton of work. The whole show is also out of order <laughs> no, now. So. You don't know what's next, right? No, do you? Do you? you, because we thought since you brought out a small bird, yeah. you would bring out something for contrast. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Like a. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. That was close. Okay. Um, this is 
flat, everybody. Why it's called a marabou stork. A marabou stork. This is one of the stork. largest species of bird in the entire world. He's got about an 11 foot wingspan going over your heads. Look at that. Yeah, they are huge, and they're also so important because of the job that they have. These birds are scavengers. So heads up, here he comes. So they eat dead stuff, which is really gross. But again, so important because when other animals die, a bird like this comes along and helps to clean up the mess, which helps stop the spread of disease and keeps wild places clean. Yes, they are amazing birds for sure. So two more treats on the rock, and now you get to watch my favorite part. This is when he exits at top speed. You ready for this? There it is. <laughs> Vlad, the mayor of New Storm. That was good. You don't rush for anything more than that big. No, that's true. That was good. I will give you more warning. That's yes, thank you. Yeah, that was fun. But it's always cool to talk about how important animals are in the wild, the roles that they have. So some animals will clean up dead stuff like they do scavengers. Some animals will even benefit humans with the things they do out in the wild, like this really cool bird that you find in Africa called a crab crane. Because they'll eat insects around where farmers have farms, which is super important. His name is Fraser. <laughs> 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 Kids, ask your dads why that's funny. <laughs> Lucy's gonna call him to say she can get a closer look at it. No, I thought we talked about you were gonna do it. Oh, uh, no, I was gonna. You're gonna show me how to work with a vaccine. No, that's I, I meant that you were gonna try it in a show because it's been going well backstage. It, yeah, but we've never done it out here. Why not try it? This audience has been really supportive. Do y'all want to see Chris feed the crane? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. No, that's cool. okay. 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 Yeah, do you have to read Yeah, of course. Okay, so oh, normally I'm the one who calls Frazier down the stage, but Chris has been practicing. Cool. Uh, he's been working on his relationship with Frazier backstage pretty much exclusively, right? Yes. Um, but they've been hanging out, Chris has been giving him his favorite treat, so I think they're ready. Here we go. Frazier! Frazier! That's good too. I'm gonna let you take over. <laughs> what is this? No, 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 no. I, I actually, I was really hoping you'd kind of want to give this a shot today because the team noticed that you were struggling to make the next step with Frazier, and we, we got you a gift. Really? Yeah, we really think it's going to help you make a connection. Um, I think we put it over there behind the rock. Behind the rock. Yeah, go look. You see, crown cranes, they get their name from the crest of golden feathers on their head. So we thought, what if Chris has his own crest of golden feathers? Should I put it on? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. You're the picture of success. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, come on. Look, as soon as this bird looks up, he's gonna look right at you. I just don't understand. You, no, you look like one of his crown Oh, hang on. Okay, okay, come on. <laughs> okay. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wait, you really think the hat did that? Oh, uh, no. The hat was for all of us. Okay. Come on, I think you've been hanging out with that bird all week, right? All of that training finally paid off. Yeah, that is amazing. Fraser Crane, everybody. <laughs> and Guy Fieri, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna take that. Okay. The hat is a little bit silly, that is not how we train the birds. However, the relationship building is a huge part of how we are able to bring all of these birds out with all of you and hopefully inspire everyone to think about the relationship that we can all create with the natural world and more importantly, the impact we all have on wildlife every single day. Yeah, and, and Lucy's right. I mean, humans can do incredible things and one of the best conservation <laughs> success stories is actually the story of the national bird of the United States of America. Everybody, we want you to meet. Hope is an incredible bird who unfortunately was injured when she was very young in the wild. So she lives here with us and helps us to tell the story about how this is a species we almost lost forever. Because there was a time when their numbers had like crashed and people thought that in the future there wouldn't be bald eagles in the wild flying around anymore. So an amazing thing happened, right? People took action. They cleaned up the waterways where the eagles like to fish, and they stopped using chemical pesticides like DDT, which was one of the reasons for this and a lot of other bird species to climb.
And the cool part of that is that it was people, like everyone here, who made the difference that helped save a species from the brink of extinction. Yeah, exactly right. Everybody's efforts added up. Their numbers started to rise. They rose so high, the bald eagle was actually taken off the endangered species list. These are really important birds. Blue-throated macaws are only found in one place, and that's Bolivia. Unfortunately, right now, there's probably less than 400 of these birds left in the wild. It's a scary low number, but it's not all bad news. We teamed up with an organization called the World Parrot Trust, and they're breeding blue-throated macaws, whose offspring will be released into Bolivia to join up with the populations there in the hopes that one day we might get the chance to see skies filled with blue-throated macaws. That would be an amazing type for sure, but it doesn't end there. There are so many animals out there with their own unique stories, like toucans, like this guy right here, and chickens, of course. There's a lot of cool animals out there. Bowie, the not porno with Michael. Go out in nature and explore. Have an adventure, because you never know when you might find your new favorite. Yeah, absolutely. So folks, on behalf of all of us up here, especially all of our feathered friends, we want to leave you with one final wish. May your hearts take flight and your spirits soar forever.